Hi everyone, this is a short video about my practical data engineering project that I recently updated. So you might know that I have this uh, practical data engineering repository on GitHub um, where I posted uh, this blog post uh, around three years ago, that was in 2021. This is uh, like a showcase of the whole uh, project in deep details. So you see what you will learn, the tools and hands-on, what you're doing with step-by-step step, from scraping to storing it on S3 to doing the change data capturing to added feature, database feature to S3 with Delta Lake, some machine learning with Jupyter Notebook, um, ingesting into Druid, the OLAP warehouse, some dashboarding, and then we orchestrate everything together with Daxter and everything ran on Kubernetes. So that was the, the old article. And now I took some time to update because this is still one or the most searched uh, article or found article on Google from my website. So uh, I thought I would spend some time to actually update to the latest version because the, the tools I used were still three years. Um, from now, so basically what I did, I updated the Daxter and all the used tools. I also removed the Spark uh, for my local development because it was just uh, uh, quite a nightmare to set up locally. So I'm using now Delta RS, which is basically a Rust version of Delta Lake that directly runs with Python. In case you don't know that, Delta RS, so it's a quite nice tool. Um, which you can directly implement or import with Python. So that's what I replaced it with. And yeah, there's a lot of going on. So there's also uh, MinIO, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, some visualizations. So, but just to um, say that upfront, I only updated the parts of uh, Orchestra, uh, the pipeline part. Um, so uh, as you can see here, so this is a uh, real state um, project where I scrape with beautiful soup then I do change data capturing like to find out that I don't download properties over and over again properties that are already downloaded I will uh, not download again utilization of MinIO so this is basically a S3 API interface that I can use locally to mimic S3 based on my local file storage it also has a nice UI that you will see later I use Delta Lake for the table format. So um, this is basically a database features on top of distributed files. So it, it gives me as the transactions or I can do inserts and merges that I use in this project. I have some Jupyter notebooks that do uh, advanced analytics or data science things that uh, I haven't updated. So uh, there you would need to do a little bit more, but the code is still there also things for setting up superset and uh, and uh, deploying Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is used in the Jupyter notebooks that are spawned from Daxter. So Daxter basically runs a paper mill um, library that runs the Jupyter notebook and that sparks a job on Kubernetes. So there I didn't update that part. So that might not work on your side, but you can maybe fix that. But what I updated is the, all the other parts. So uh, here's a short overview. If you still want the old branch, I added a version one, so you can go back there. And uh, yeah, I added also uh, this night or this readme. So before it was just a couple of bullet points that hopefully shows you what uh, what you can use, what you need. And um, yeah, here is basically a quick install that we go through. This is how it looks now. And uh, yeah, there's also some resources. So this is the post that I showed you. There's on a DevOps repository with uh, how to set up Druid or Superset. So in case you want to explore that part, there's a related uh, blog post. And there's also my data engineering vault. So here you can have uh, all the knowledge of data engineering that I'm sharing publicly. So we have a lot of things here. You have the evolution, you have some books, the people of data engineering. So if you go there, you have all the 
the backlinks to this article or the, the graph. So you can navigate with that. And uh, you can see there is a lot of uh, information there as well. So if I go back to the practical data engineering, there's also the another link to this uh, vault, data engineering vault with all the open source data engineering projects. In the beginning there is mine, so this is not the one I'm showing right now. Uh, some others I made and then many, many others. So you can search also another project if you want to use something else like Kafka. So you can use this one. So this is a curated list of uh, articles and mainly GitHub repository for open data engineering projects. I update it um, almost every month. So uh, in case you're interested in that as well, you can check that out. But yeah, let's now jump in. This is the, the Jupyter notebooks that how if, if you manage to make them work, they would look like this. And uh, yeah, let's follow the quick start here. So first what I will do, I will clone this repository. So uh, if I uh, start a new TMOC session and then I uh, clone it in this repository. I'll just pull down my key switcher here. So first thing I'll do, I'll go in the uh, source image so you can see basically what i have here i have a readme and then i have source pipelines real estate and here it's the it's basically the tax repository where i have my pipelines uh, they are all in uh, in here and here are the tests and so the setup is also here so basically what i would do now i would create the virtual environment so you can, I created the number two because I already have one. And then uh, I source this. And now I basically uh, install the, the dependencies which are pip install dev. So this is now installing all the required tools. What I can do in the meantime, I can set up my uh, Minio, so this is used to save my uh, Delta tables and uh, my files. I'm, I'm saving them on S3, and S3 is Minio in my case, so I can start that up with that command. So I have Minio installed here. So you would need to brew install Minio, I guess, or and then you can start like this. Um, let's just create that. Make it your temp. You know, I think it will also create it if it doesn't exist, but then you can basically run that up. And now the nice thing is that you have a, you have S3 API, but you also have a console, so they're all basically uh, accept or available under uh, this port 9000. So uh, if I go to 172 and 9000. It reroutes me to a unique port, but uh, the the one the nine thousand is also available that you can use programmatically in your DAX. So I log in here. So uh, this is now a full fledged S three. So you have a bucket policy. You can create uh, secrets. Um, so it's quite powerful. So what I would need to do now, I need to create a the bucket I need use in this project, so that's called real estate. And then we can go back and basically start the Daxter. So I have a make command. If I hit make, it basically runs the Daxter dev. And that will then spawn up Daxter on port 3000. And here we have our pipeline. So if you haven't seen DAX before, so you have the overview here. You have the jobs, schedulers, sensors, and so on. There's also the assets, um, which I don't use in this project. I just created a job, uh, which called Scrape Real Estate. And then you can basically see what it's doing. So here you see the, the 
each of the thing has like a description so you can see here i'm downloading the json from Scout, caching it as a zip upload it to s3 you can then expand this and then you see the each of the the, the tasks i'm doing here you can go back and uh, basically this is a dynamic uh, job that's what you see here with the star so uh, in my launch I'm basically saying what I want to search. So here I, I, it's my city I want to search. You say the radius. So if I want to search 10 kilometers around, you could say that. And then here you can either say end, rent or buy. And then there's some pre-filled things that you don't need to change. So this is just uh, basically the connections to our uh, Minayo or S3. So uh, if we go back one more time here, this one is the merge to the table. You see that we cache it first, then we flatten the JSON and we merge it. And at the end we do the dead data exploratory. So this is basically Jupyter notebooks, which will fail in this case because I didn't properly set up the, the Kubernetes. That might be something I, I'll do later. But um, yeah, you can also see that tax shows like the last execution times, the what like input parameters, so they're also typed. So I'm using delta coordinates here. You can then click on them and see uh, the description. And uh, if you have more defined, you can also see maybe the file handle. No. They will also show more details, so you can really see for example, the search coordinate, I have defined what, like the city property. So it's, this is then also nice if you then run it. So you have like an auto completion. So if you hit control slash or space, then you can actually get the auto completion here. And uh, yeah, that's quite nice. So that can already know be uh, beforehand if something is missing. So it doesn't need to run and then fail. So, but let's kick off this uh, job. So the, the first one here is also, because now we don't have a table, so that will create just an empty table. If you go now in our uh, real estate bucket, it created this Lake Bronze property. And it created now the first version was the 000. zero, zero. So that one uh, just created an empty one and then the second one is now the merge that uh, that has been here. So it, it did all the collecting, the storing, caching. Uh, you can also see when it runs that uh, all the logs here. So basically uh, it goes to the URL search is the, the, the all the properties we, we specified and then at some point it will find the property IDs it will see that they all change because that they are new right there there's an empty table and then basically it's downloaded them zipped them and eventually it uh, so here you see it will uh, download each of them and then eventually merge it into the into the table delta table so that's the, this one here there's some logs with the you can see the basically the schema or the json what's all in there and if we go back in the our s3 you can see there is now the parquet file with these four properties. If we now re-download, it will merge again or find and we'll try to find the changes. And uh, yeah, you could now work with that and explore that in your BI dashboard with the superset or ingest it to Druid. Um, so that's pretty nice. And what else? But I think that's that's all I wanted to show. So here is the visualization of the pipeline, the resources I showed before. 
and yeah so i just wanted to show quickly how you set it up so in case you want to try it there's a, a lot more obviously if you go into sources you you will find all the pipelines and then under tests is all the tests so you can with pytest you can i added some tests to to uh, check if the table exists and so on in the real estate you have the pipelines and you have some common resources so here is like the Jupyter notebook resource we have some solids for notebooks we have some scraping resources and delta table and type so this is all here in case you want to have a look feel free also feel free to like open an issue or pull request if you have anything you would like to add because uh, I spend a lot of time now upgrading the tools and I will probably add some more uh, features like uh, I would like to add the real developer experience so I can have a BI dashboards based on DuckDB which is uh, also local first with the command line so that will fit nice into this setup but yeah there's also much more I could add but yeah looking forward for your feedback and uh, yeah see you in the next one